Welcome to the Hollywood Scholar, I'm Chad Morgan, and this weekend's box office numbers are out, and there are some really interesting ones, some that surprised me quite a bit, especially when it came to Bullet Train, which is the number one movie at the box office this weekend. Now, this really surprised me because it just seemed like a generic action movie to me, though that is something that we may need these days, just back to form generic action movie may be exactly what we need in this day and age with the state of Hollywood, so maybe it's not as surprising as I thought it would be but yeah bullet train in domestic markets got 30 million at the domestic box office that's really not bad especially for a movie with this budget which i'll get into in a minute here dc legend of super pets don't really care about that movie not gonna see it whatever 11 million not great really not great for the second week of release and i don't know what the budget is but i imagine it's pretty high considering the cast that's in it so it may be really struggling to break even nope uh i haven't seen any of jordan peele's movies not necessarily interested 8.5 million in week three that's okay for a movie of this caliber a thrillers are usually a lot cheaper so that should be fine and then this is the really interesting one Thor Love and Thunder makes $7.6 million at the domestic box office in its fifth week of release. That grounds to a halt. That is Thor just dying. It's over. It's not going to make much more. It's still going to have about another 50% drop next week if it follows the track records of other Marvel movies of Doctor Strange and whatnot. It's, it's, it's over. It's barely going to cross $700 million. Barely. Barely. And I'm not really that surprised. It's kind of where my predictions was at around the $700 million mark, which is breaking even. It has started to make some money at this point, but not enough. It's pennies on the dollar. It is not a good investment when you're making this little from a project of this magnitude with a budget of $250 million. That's not good. And it couldn't happen to a better movie because I really didn't like Thor Love and Thunder. So it deserves to ground to a halt in its fifth week of release. And it's kind of interesting that Top Gun Maverick made really close to the same amount, $7.03 million at the domestic box office this weekend. That's very, very close. And Top Gun Maverick is in its 11th week of release. Top Gun Maverick is doing twice as well as Thor Love and Thunder, a Marvel tentpole production. That's really, really impressive. But I want to jump into Bullet Train for just a second here. So worldwide, it made $62 million. Now, this movie is a lot, lot cheaper than a lot of the other ones that we talk about, like, like the Marvel movies and whatnot. So it doesn't need to make near as much, but that is still a little bit low. So the reported budget for this movie is $90 million. So you normally double that around $180 to $200 million to break even with $60 million in the opening weekend. It would really depend on how big the drop off for week two is. It, I've heard a lot of great things about it, so I think it might have a relatively low drop off compared to a lot of the other movies that we talk about. So it can break even. I, I fully expect it to break even, but 60 million isn't super great. It's not super bad either. It's really going to be in the next couple weeks that we find out. But Thor Love and Thunder's numbers in the worldwide, it's gotten to $698 million at the international box office or as total so that's that's good that is good it's gonna cross that 700 million next week no question about that but i don't think it's gonna make it to 720 i don't think it's gonna make it that far there's no way it's gonna make 750 and so that's really a little bit higher than i was expecting but really close into the range of what i predicted after that first week drop off and you can kind of see the weekend here we're in the fifth weekend still consistently around the 50 up and down a little bit around the 50% mark, 42% two weeks in a row. And if it continues another 50%, 42%, that's really not going to be good for this movie going forward. And it's ground to a halt. It's going to be making barely any money. It's not going to take long before it's only making one or two million dollars each week at the box office. And that's similar to the Ragnarok numbers. It has passed the Ragnarok's domestic total 315 million this one is at 360 million so just barely past Ragnarok and so it is looking like it's gonna fail actually to live up to Ragnarok at least in the worldwide in the domestic it's beaten it but in the worldwide you see there it's barely at 700 million worldwide it got 850 million if it loses to Ragnarok especially with the numbers I'm gonna get into here in a second that's going to be really, really bad for this movie if it can't even equal Ragnarok. It may have had a better opening weekend, 
but it dropped off way heavier than Ragnarok did, and that's really, really not good, especially for how much money this movie costs. So that's some just interesting comparison. And compared to Doctor Strange, in its sixth week of release, it did another 43% near exactly what it did the week before. So again, looking like we're going to be looking at another 42% drop, 43% drop for week five if you compare Doctor Strange, which is its most recent comparison tool. Interesting, kind of interesting. And then there's this article here from Forbes that is actually really cool. And it's weird to see a mainstream website like this go into detail. Interest in superhero movies drops. Poll finds worrisome trend for Disney mid-Marvel slump. Now this article actually goes into some really fascinating numbers and breaks down the price of tickets between now and 2017 when Ragnarok came out. Comparison, it's actually 30 percent higher so if it's making around the same amount of money that's a third of less audience actually going and that's not good inflation is higher and ticket prices are higher so the movie looks like it's making a relatively similar money to Ragnarok at least domestically but if it's a third less of the actual audience going actually a third less paying customer that's a third less in merchandising which is with a real money maker for the mcu for toys for everything like that a third less of your audience going to see a movie is really bad even if the money stays relatively equivalent losing that much of an audience is not a good sign for a franchise of this caliber so overall these are some really interesting numbers really like that article if you want to check out the breakdown of the numbers definitely go check it out on Forbes but these the rest of these numbers really what I was expecting for a lot of them bullet train was a surprise to me and I might be checking it out not for a review just for fun it's not the type of thing that I feel like I want to review but for enjoyment definitely might check it out but the Thor Love and Thunder Ragnarok comparison is better now than it was in Thor Love and Thunder's entire run. So some really interesting stuff. But anyway, that's all I have for today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Anon. <laughs>